What's good, folks? Welcome to another edition of the Cover One Film Room, the show that gives you the hows and the whys behind both the good and the bad of the Buffalo Bills. I'm one of your two hosts, Anthony Prohaska, joined as always by Eric Turner. And Eric, up? let's go. Uh, last week was kind of like our first <laughs> in-season official film room, but not really because we didn't have any game tape to go over of the previous week. But now we are truly in regular season form mm-hmm. here in the film room when we get to do so after a Buffalo Bills victory in week one against the Arizona Cardinals. But despite that, there's a bit of consternation from fans and how to take certain pieces and elements from both sides of the ball. We are obviously going to touch on a lot of that tonight with the offense and the defense. But regardless, Eric, football is truly, truly back. Yes. The Bills are want to know. We've got game tape to go over. No more offseason. How sh- what should we do for this week's topic? What do we need to figure out? We're in rhythm. We're in flow. It's good to be back. Right. And uh, yes, it's good to be back. On this victory Monday, we're we're filming this a couple days early. Uh, I got some work travel stuff, so we wanted to uh, rip through the film today and then bring it and share it with you guys. Give give us uh, give your two uh, two cents that you know from this game or whatever. I'm sorry, but you know I'm happy because the Bills were able to get up over 30 points against the Cardinals at home. Um, there's some rumblings about how. The they ran maybe too much. Mm. How the defense struggled a little bit. Mm. How there were some early game jitters. Yeah, some of that is true. Some of that is not. But that's why we bring you the film room each and every week. We're gonna break down the nuts and bolts of what happened against the Cardinals on Sunday. Yeah, it was a honestly just like if you're a fan of the Bills, it was probably a little too close for comfort. But I thought this was a fun football game. We talked about it. Six points exactly. Right. Like right. we talked Our about it. Like, yeah, yeah, it was six and a half and the <laughs> o- over was 48 and a half. We said smash the over. And then you and I both took the Cardinals to cover the spread. So mm-hmm. we would have we would have been accurate there, too. Um, yeah. And I was also really close to my individual game prediction was 31, 27 bills. I was so close with that. But this was a fun game. We saw and you know, we talked about it, like what the Cardinals can do out of heavier personnel packages, how they like to use their tight ends, what mm-hmm. they like to do with the run game, how the Bills like to do similar pieces on offense, how each side of the ball could attack the other. It was a good schematic matchup, a good game. Obviously, you know, a Bills victory makes it taste a little sweeter and is a bit more enjoyable, but a good back and forth game, some drama at the end where the game really ends on downs with the yeah. Cardinals trying to tie it up and then take a lead with the extra point. Got some good special teams action. This was a, a fun opening week game as the Bills and the Cardinals too and every other team really try to find who they are, settle into what they're going to be for this season, which really is a journey through the month of September and even going into October a little bit of team until teams really settle in to who they are and what they are. Yeah, it was interesting early in the game how the defense really couldn't get off the field. The cards controlled the tempo of the game, the time of possession. Overall, I mean, in the first half, they controlled the clock 20 over 20 minutes in the first half or something like that. Yeah, it was nice. um, and it was cool and interesting because, you know, you got a new play caller on defense and Bobby Babbage and the cards came out and they were using tempo. And it's like, oh, that's new. So kind of ratcheting up his blood pressure a little bit, I'm <laughs> sure, where he's not able to get all his, his actual calls in and trying to match their personnel. Then I'd you be throw pissed. In the injury. I'd be like, this is my first yeah. game, man. You guys are going to do this to me. Like, yeah, just give me rude. a break here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have the injury to Taron Johnson yeah. uh, in the, you know, that first drive and quick news uh, update on him. McDermott just spoke and said, Taron is out for this game Thursday against the Finns. So that's a little update there as is uh, Dwayne Smoot, the defensive end for the bills. And Javon Solomon was still injured as well. And yes, they're keep, they're monitoring him as they kind of go through the process short week, obviously muddies it, but he has a chance to play. Whereas the previous, like you mentioned, definitely out. And Josh Allen is cleared to play. The diagnosis hasn't come out. Obviously McDermott's not going to give us shocking. shocking. Yeah. yeah. But he is going to play Thursday. So that was just a quick update from the presser, but I thought what the cards did on offense early in the game, they had a really good script going. And I think the bills defense was kind of feeling them out and working their game plan. Uh, which we're going to talk about a little later on offense. I mean, the Bills, again, they didn't have the ball all that often, and they only had four plays in the first quarter, 15 in the second quarter, so they kind of got rolling in that second quarter. And Allen, I thought, did a great job, and we're going to talk about it tonight, um, of spreading the ball around, you know, getting it to, what, nine or ten different receivers, mm. getting that double double dip before halftime was huge, getting that touchdown before halftime, coming out and getting another one. Um, and, and I thought the offense was just efficient all around. Josh Allen was efficient all around. 
They had a 55% success rate overall, 69% success rate passing. So defense was interesting. I think they settled in. We'll talk about those adjustments that happened first and second half. Offense was efficient for pretty much the entire game when Allen held on to the ball. Yeah. And, you know, that ties really into that first. That The first, like, quarter, especially the first half of it, was so weird. And not necessarily weird, but just the Cardinals get the ball, mm-hmm. drive down and score a touchdown with a bit of a an assist to uh, the referees for yeah. the penalty on Jamarcus Ingram that should have been a penalty. But they made it up to the Bills later by uh, calling that face mask on Zayvon Collins' sack on Allen that shouldn't have been. Or yeah. Yeah. I think they called it, it roughing confusing. the passer when it, yeah. it, 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 he didn't do anything it confusing. wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was weird. But So they kind of gave, gave the Bills back one there. But so the Cardinals drive down, take a whole bunch of time off the clock with that first drive. Take then the, the Bills get the out ball, of it. Take the crowd out of it. Then Codrington runs it back mm-hmm. over midfield. So the Bills get great starting field position. They're running the ball right off rip with Dart, get great success. Then Allen has that turnover and the ball goes right back to the Cardinals. So the game script kind of took the ball completely out of the Bills' hands early on offensively, mm-hmm. which again to the point, I think kind of kind of hindered them even further in terms of settling into who they are. They're not having the ball a ton. They're not getting into the rhythm. It's the first regular season action with live bullets. So things kind of working against them a little bit. It was exactly like you said, I think the offense and defense really started to settle in as the game went on. I really like the defensive adjustments they made coming out of halftime, obviously, which we'll, we'll talk about, um, you know, the, the Cardinals just really staying true to who they were early on. Like, Hey, we're going to go 12 and 13. We're going to mash you. They were really su- successful with those pin and pull runs, getting to the edge and taking advantage of, of less than fundamental run fits from the bills, especially when it came to um, defending that outside and having your force players and guys box things in Taron Johnson's injury, muddy that even further. And, and obviously that's going to be an issue again, going into this week against Miami, no Taron Johnson, who's extremely right. helpful against Miami considering the personnel groupings they like to operate from, what they like to do with Alec Ingold. Taron Johnson helps you fight a lot of that because of his ability to function in the run fit, in addition to being a legitimate pass defender in zone and man. So it's another Cam Lewis week is what Mm -hmm. it looks like. He improved, I thought, as the game went on. It was part of the adjustments in the second half, just from an individual standpoint that played better, especially against those pin and pull runs. But at the end of the day, the defensive performance in – there were two pieces that really got me. You mentioned one um, from the offensive side, the Josh Allen target distribution. He was 18 to 23, 10 bills. Players saw a target. Nine players had at least one catch. Five players had at least two catches. And then if we're just kind of putting the defensive adjustments into perspective from the second half in that game, if I could find the tweet that I tweeted earlier, there we go. The bills defense in the second half drive by drive, Punt, three plays, negative four yards with a sack on third down. Turnover, two plays, zero yards, strip sack on third down. A field goal on an eight-play, 58-yard drive. 29 of that came from a Kyler Murray scramble. Then a punt, three plays, negative five yards with a sack on third down. And then the fourth down stop to end the game on a nine-play, 31-yard drive. So good adjustments from them coming out of the half, which a lot of that we'll dive into. And again, overall performance where... You were on your heels a little bit in the beginning, but they found a way to win against the team that, like we talked about, is a little bit better, especially offensively, that yeah. I think a lot of people gave them credit for going into week one. All right, so let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Well, I don't think it was any different than we expected, right? Josh Allen was the identity of the Bills' offense. Just passing alone, he was 18 for 23. That's a 78.3 completion percentage, 10.1 yards per attempt, 232 yards uh i thought he played very efficient as we said at the top he was very efficient spread the ball around uh, pretty much took what the defense gave him Mm -hmm. uh sometimes he took a you know an intermediate shot or a deep shot but more times than not he was working a lot of stuff underneath getting it to his check downs getting to his you know second and third reads at times i thought overall josh was that triple or you know that triple threat that we expect from him and yes it it, you know he did get injured up a little bit but what he did inside and outside the pocket at extending plays, I thought was really what, obviously it's what makes Josh Allen. And even Jonathan Gannon, the head coach of the Cardinals says, give Allen credit. That's the secret sauce and he's good at it. We got back there a couple of times, which they did, even causing that strip sack and fumble. Mm-hmm. But he did make some plays with play extension with his legs. And then the hardest thing I think in the passing game is you're covering for that long and he found some guys open. I mean, both sides of the ball, both defenses, I should say, 
had that issue. Mm-hmm. I think playing Murray, playing Allen, they those guys like to hold on to the ball and extend plays from inside, outside the pocket. For the Bills, uh, Josh just made a few more explosive plays, not just with his arm, but with his legs. Yeah, and what was nice to see, the plays that he made with his legs, we saw legitimate scrambles where, okay, he's just going to scramble and he's going to run for yardage or a first down or touchdown, whatever he's going to do there. But then we also saw him just scrambling with his legs to then keep his eyes downfield and make plays with his arm. And it was a really good job from Allen in this game. The Cardinals got a bit more pressure than I anticipated them getting in this game. And he was making free runners miss from the first level, from the second level, and then not just avoiding that pressure turning into a sack and, you know, throwing it out of bounds, but taking that and turning that into a positive to completely spin that. And, you know, one of the phrases, Eric, we always use in this show, you know, make, make you right when you're wrong. The right. Cardinals were right a lot and he'd make them wrong and vice versa for the offense. Really good performance by him in a game where they needed him to kind of Khalil Shakir, where the bills are actually working the one, two up top to Kincaid on third down early in the game. And, and Josh doesn't throw it right here. Just a, you know, a double in breaking route and he's trying to target Kincaid, but Kincaid kind of slips out of the break right there. And Josh feels that it may have given this guy time to drive on it. And, and also maybe even this guy. Yeah. Thompson, Jalen Thompson, the second one you highlighted, he's going to drive on that and yeah, knock that down. And you can see the markers right here. This is the third Mm -hmm. down play, uh, but another big one. So he reloads and exits the pocket, goes to his left, immediately gets his hips around. It's beautiful. Gets his hips -hmm. hips around, gets it to Allen, Josh Allen, I should say, and why it's just so (laughs) hard to defend him. And here's another, what makes Josh Allen, Josh Allen. Here's the uh, touchdown. Uh, in the first half, uh, just a, a little zone read play. The Bills had trouble kind of running this play. The Dolphins, remember, was that last year? Or was that two years ago? Where they were like calling the play out when the Bills would run this. Oh, two years, yeah, two years ago. Two when years they, ago, when they yeah. lost in the sun. Yeah, that's yeah, but the you game. can see everyone is stacked at the line of scrimmage, and you're like, man, this doesn't look good, right? But Josh, you know, executes that mesh. This defender just carries down far too, uh, mm-hmm. too tightly into the uh, line of scrimmage in, in backfield. And just gives Josh just enough outside to get and beat the defenders, the Cardinals defenders, to the corner for the touchdown. And you know, we saw Kyler Murray have success uh, on a similar play at multiple points in this game. But the difference between Kyler and Josh Allen and most quarterbacks who run this read and Josh Allen really is that finish. Like, mm-hmm. so he executes the mesh really well. He sees 54 come screaming down too hard, takes it to the corner, and he doesn't have the corner. Like, the defender gets over the top of Kincaid. So Allen is like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to put my shoulder yeah. down and go through you. So he goes through that defensive back while this is why he was tops in that pressure to sack percentage yes. last year in PFF, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a, a hallmark of his the past several years. And yeah, he was, he was tops in the league last year. It's usually been like him and Mahomes kind of dueling back and forth and each being in the top three, the past couple. And this one this has to be so frustrating if you're the Cardinals, right? You you have a look. The Bills blow the protection. You have a free runner. <clears throat> Allen makes that free runner miss. But then, like you said, to have the poise to not only step up and avoid that free runner, but then to have the wherewithal to yeah. avoid 54, and you highlighted the track there from Zayvon Collins, number they, 25. And what they want here, and they want him to feel pressure off his right and, and then it, yeah. circle out to his left, and and they have Zavin as that that late looper. But no, again, you're right. It's got to be frustrating. Why? Because he stays front side of this after making that guy miss. It's just nuts. Like to to step up and avoid that free runner, and to have the wherewithal. That's the second time I said wherewithal today, and I haven't said that word Love once him. in the last like year and a half. <laughs> steps up, and then this is where it gets me. So he steps up to avoid forty four. But then the the horizontal movement after it to step up, see that flash peripheral, from 54. Yeah. Yes, to get that into his peripheral and then pop it back out and loop around Spencer Brown. Two hands on the ball the entire yes. time, climbing up and bouncing. Two hands on the ball the entire time. And that's the big one for me too, right? He's navigating this chaos, but his fundamentals are sound throughout the entirety of it. So you're getting the athleticism and the controlled chaos mutant alien that Josh (laughs) Allen is everything biting the burger, rotating through even initially, like how his eyes are aligned with his feet and his shoulder. Like he's just got, like you said, good posture, good positioning. And and it shows 
when you're able to pull off throws with this kind of pinpoint accuracy, which he needed on this one. Granted, it still could have been a completion if he's not pinpoint, but Jalen Thompson, number 34, is right there. So if this ball isn't out in front of Matt Collins and it, he's got to slow down a little bit to get it, maybe Thompson makes the tackle and then you're kind of having to live to fight another down at the two or the one yard line. So just a really great play overall, cerebrally and physically. Absolutely. So moving on to another pretty touchdown, Josh Allen to Khalil Shakir. This is our making it look easy play of the game. Thanks to easy loan on this play, Anthony. So let's get started here. Another, you know, low red zone type play, Josh getting it out there and receiver screens to Shakir to guys like Curtis Samuel. So look at how the defense is kind of stacking here. All right. So you got the one-on-one -on -one up here. Like that's understandable. And we can see that. But look at the slight leverage that this uh, uh, defensive formation or structure gives Shakir out there. So, boom, as he snaps it, gets the ball, getting the ball out to a playmaker, getting some blockers out in front. And that's why this play is our making it look easy play of the game. Yeah, just really beautiful. Great call and execution here on the tunnel screen. I, I like that you called out the Mac Hollins block. I feel like that's a, that's a, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. one that I think gets lost in the sauce a little bit and understandably so, right? It's an amazing play by Shakir. Deion Dawkins kills a dude, like you said, but this play does not happen without Matt Collins. So that nickel corner, he, he triggers right away. He sees Shakir take that step back and is immediately like, here comes the screen. He breaks on it. There is no hesitation. It's an immediate trigger and shoot. And Hollins picks it up, rides him by. So that play does not happen without Matt Collins. Then you get, again, the Deion Dawkins murder in open space was just tremendous. But then, yes, that is Buda he's, Baker. He's not just breaking some tackle of no. some random dude. No. Buda Baker's Buda Baker. coming in there with purpose, bro. And Buda Baker is legitimately pulls over and gets yeah. posterized later. So Shakir lowers the shoulder, breaks the tackle from Buda Baker, who, again, can thump and bring dudes down. He breaks through that. Then I don't know how he even breaks that tackle. No. He's and so then low. He, Yes. So also he breaks that tackle and then avoids like the trash from Jalen Thompson's carcass and doesn't get tripped up. And then here comes 93. This is a, a defensive big, lineman, yes, a defensive <laughs> end in their odd front structure. He is a big boy. Big Shakir turns it into a glancing blow. And then this is the one that gets me right. As he goes down, he peeks a little bit he over does. his right shoulder right here. Which makes, yes, right there, which makes me think, like, does he land on him on purpose because he knows, like, he's down there? And I don't know if that's just me wanting or wishing that, but just the athleticism, the awareness, pinballing off defenders, and then, yeah, landing on a dude and having the wherewithal. He doesn't have the highest snap share, but when he gets the ball and he's on the field, he just makes ridiculous, regardless of your credit situation. Man, just awesome stuff from the Bills offense on that. Um, those, you know, cut a couple plays right there. Um, but it was also nice to see, you know, the ball spread around to different guys, but also you saw some of that variance, some of that big playability from Josh Allen to Keon Coleman at the top of the screen, just straight up trusting him on this ball down the field. I mean, Keon didn't give him much to work with. You can see he's right in, almost into the boundary a yard, maybe, maybe yard and a half away from the boundary. Mm -hmm. Josh still threw it up, trusted him on that, you know, in that one-on-one -on -one situation. And somehow you can see Coleman working through, you know, the traffic and the disruption and the guy trying to push him into the boundary and kind of Keon is able to show that strength and make the catch along the boundary. And he did not disappoint on this play. Again, pushing back, using that physicality and that big body, playing into the catch, into the ball there, separating late, and then the big play down the field. It was nice to see him get involved in this way, playing him, right? Trusting him to make this play down the field. Yeah, we, we've talked about it so much when it comes to his game. These are the areas where he needs to find success early, make these kind of plays. And I like that you pointed out just kind of the route and how he stemmed this through and not to knock him or anything like that. But this, like you said, like th there's very little margin for error here because of where he ran this route. When he catches it and where he is, he's almost already on those little hashes yeah. right by the sideline. There you are in him from Coleman to fight, go up, he goes up and gets it a little bit, catches it in his gut, but he does attack the ball a little bit. And then the awareness spatially to get his feet down, pinpoint, and stay in bounds. Again, considering he left him and Allen very little room for error here. And Allen does the job on his end. Coleman does the job on his. This was a really tremendous play. And again, if, if no doubt about it. And again, this is a play Josh gets hurt. But it looks, 
I like this play. It's like they're kind of running a delay mesh concept. Yes, so you got yes. there's a swing. You get like a little delay from Coleman here. You get the the mesh coming across the middle. But then they're trying to sneak Kincaid, I think, out here. And I, I don't know if he's going to convert this into like a rail or he converts it to an out here because of the coverage. But either way, it's very nice design. It just gets covered there, whether it's because of great coverage or the play just not working and, and unfolding they want the way they wanted to, or the Cardinals got good pressure. He did what he had to do. And I mean, there's really nowhere else to go but up over the top of Buda Baker because <laughs> usually Buda Baker, obviously, he's not the biggest guy, yeah. but when he comes in, he usually goes for the legs. And so yeah. it's no surprise that Josh decided to go up and over. But it's like I said, Josh is a lot bigger than Buda. So that kind of makes sense either way six points for the good guys yeah I, I again i feel i feel so bad for buda baker because he's so good and we're showing like two bad plays for him so buda baker is listed uh for reference at 510 195 pounds mm -hmm. and josh allen for reference is listed at 237 pounds but we know he kind of flirts between 240 250 mm -hmm. so buda is coming down to make a play on allen and allen's got him by like at least 40 pounds and so Buddha has to go low to your point. And yeah. Allen knows that. And we just get like that air Allen, like you said, and just makes a ridiculous play. And this one also too, like I feel for the Cardinals defense, like you said, I like the concept and the design from the bills. I like the coverage from the Cardinals even more. Yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they're disciplined. They recognize what's going on. They match everything, but then because they match it, it parts the Red Sea in the middle of the field because those crossers combined with Kincaid going out, combined with Cook going out, it just drains the entirety of the spine. Exactly. And now you have this wide open alley combined with the lack of rush lane integrity up front and with the sticks and the vest just waving yeah. like come this way. And it's Allen and Buda Baker one on one and Allen just goes over him. And it, yeah, just that play was just so ridiculous. And again, you know, some, some mitigation of happiness there. Cause he banged up his hand. We'll see how much that mitigates him going forward. But yeah. again, just that yin and yang of Josh Allen. We talked about it so much last year, this game, we saw more of the positive side, which I think is the yin. I've looked this up like 20 times and I never remembered it. So whichever <laughs> one is the positive, that was more in this game. Just what drives him to make these decisions and these plays. And when they don't work, they're catastrophic and terrible. And when they do work, they're jaw dropping and amazing. And yeah, it's part of the reason why we've had that joke for years that the playbook is just different pictures of Josh Allen doing athletic things, going back to Dable yep. and then through Dorsey and even through Brady. It's just like all this, it's just Josh Allen being Josh Allen. So overall to kind of wrap up the offensive side of the ball, what were your thoughts on Joe Brady's first play call this year? You know, game strategy, play calls, run and pass. What was your overall thoughts coming out of this Cardinals game when it came to the offensive side of the ball? I like them attacking with the run. We talked about it in this game, the, the, how the Bills offense is built and how the Cardinals defense is built. It made sense to attack them on the ground. What I did think was interesting was I, I expected to see more duo in this game, and they really sure. just ran. We saw dart. Um, we saw some tackle trap stuff as well, but it was really a lot of zone. We even saw mid -zone. I, yeah, mid-zone. Mid -zone. And I also think we saw more outside zone than we did duo, which is something that – I, I I don't even think ever happened at any game last year for the Bills. So we saw more zone um, than we did duo. And then when they did run gap stuff, it was dart and the tackle trap. So we also got a GT counter, which was nice to see. But I liked his method of attack, starting with the run. Um, really kind of leaned into that same mid zone concept over and over again, where it'd be like a tight trips bunch. And they until they started blowing it up, yeah, right? Which yeah, happened until, in the second half. Yeah. The until time. Baker was like, all right, I, I've seen this enough. You're keeping both tight ends on the backside, running it to the weak side and cutting it back. He's like, I'm going to shoot the gap. Yeah. They, and that's how, like, I think overall, when you looked at some of the run numbers, it, it felt different than it looked mm -hmm. right. Like the, 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 after the game, you're like, man, it felt like they really ran the ball. Well, and honestly they did. It, yeah. it, it just, when you, add in and factor in those like tackle for losses after because it was very i don't want to say vanilla but like it was pretty obvious when they were going to run some mid zone yes and then the <laughs> cardinals were like okay now i'm just going to execute some run throughs with the linebacker now yep. i'm just going to send buddha baker to the weak side shoot that b gap blow the play up and then so then cromer and and brady were probably like Okay, now we got to well, do something stop. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All so, right, they're on to it. We'll adjust. Yeah, you saw right. Buddha. Buddha shoot one. Um, Mac Wilson, Mac. number two, mm -hmm. had that one that he shot from the bunch side. Kaiser White started to shade over a little bit yeah. to the weak side to force it back. 
Um, but even within that, they still had some really successful runs in the second half. But I thought that was a recipe for success. And also, I, I feel like this isn't talked about enough, but like how how you run the football also opens up the pass game, which it did for the Bills in this one. And how you defend the run and how you fit the run as a defense determines what coverage structures you use on the back end. So I thought the Bills setting the table with the run game was important. I thought it was largely successful. Exactly to your point, like if you're looking at some of the raw numbers, even some of the advanced metrics, you're going to be like, oh, like their EPA per attempt was so bad in the second half. It was like, yeah, because of the negative runs in certain down and distances and situations combined yeah. with where they were in the game and on the field, it made it seem worse than it was. But I thought the run game was good. Um, I, the pass game, I thought overall was successful. Um, when it didn't work, I thought it was due more to a lack of separation from an individual player standpoint than it was necessarily from a concept standpoint. But overall, I mean, for, for a, a 34 point performance in week one with new players and new pieces and kind of a new philosophy, I thought it worked well. And again, I think this is a formula we're going to see kind of week in and week out where the run game sets the table. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll vary. Maybe we'll get more duo next week, so on and so forth. But the run game is going to matter a lot for this team and, and, and for their weekly game plans week in and week out. What did you think of Joe Brady and how they ran this? Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I think Allen was super efficient and I think he ended at like number two in EPA per drop back, like super efficient, like 0.48 or something. Yeah. He's ridiculous. only behind. Right. Um, I think Baker Mayfield Baker. right right now before the Monday night yeah. game, Baker's one Baker's at like 0.64, like Baker yeah. had himself a day. It a was day. Baker Allen and then Mahomes. And then also mm -hmm. one quick point um, that you mentioned earlier in terms of like being inter er, efficient, only two throws, above 20 yards and only three above 15. Technically it might still be two. The next gen dot shows it right on the 15 yard mm -hmm. marker. So pretty much everything was 15 yards and below. Yeah. And, and honestly, when you can complete that percentage of passes in that, you know, condensed area of the field on top of being able to run the ball, kind of like uh, they were able to do, I, I thought it was a very efficient game plan. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some cool stuff, something that I, you know, I talked about in camp with, how they aligned the running backs kind of, you know, at running back depth, but out wide, almost stacked behind another, another receiver or tight yeah. end. Um, and, and that was interesting to see how that opened up. It, it happened on the first drive where he hit the in breaker to Matt Collins. Yep. He had cook lined up mm -hmm. at running back depth off to the far, right. Kind of yeah. stacked behind Hollins. And yeah. Towards the that, bottom of the screen. If you're yeah, looking at it from the sideline. And, and that three man concept opened up the middle of the field. So that, that spacing is going to be interesting to watch and the Cardinals did it too. So that'll be interesting. That's some yeah. kind of trend that's happening now to keep an eye yeah, on but that, overall, that and kind of that, like um that escort block type stuff yeah. where you, that I think like we saw that from the Cardinals in this game. We saw that from the bills. That, that seems to be a league wide trend that a lot of teams are kind of tapping into. So overall, I think the offense did a great job, but once they got the ball and got some reps <laughs> yeah. and in the rhythm, but with that said, Let's flip to the other side of the ball, the defense. Uh, obviously, early on, it, it was a struggle. The cards and their offense, we talked about their offense, what they like to do, mm -hmm. um, the different layers that they had, and they really had the Bills defense off balance um, in that first half. I felt like the timing and rhythm of the defense was off. Like mm -hmm. The defensive stems, we always talk about it. Like It, it just felt like when they're showing pre-snap movement and then they're trying to get to certain spots pre- to post-snap, the timing was off. Sometimes they were showing it too soon. Sometimes they were getting there too late and they were out of position post snap. It just felt like you had some of the first game jitters, you know, first, um, mm -hmm. first game wonkiness and jitters along with, uh, you know, them still trying to work through what Bobby Babbage is trying to install, but also obviously the injury to Taron Johnson was a huge one when you're talking, you know, all week you're practicing with Taron in there and you have this package with a, a dime backer coming in. And then all of a sudden, Taryn's out, and that that corner depth, that safety depth, mm. which we've loved, mm -hmm. was immediately tested after that first drive. And we've talked so much about Taryn Johnson on the show, not just from what he does on the field physically, but what he does is like a communicator and yeah. leader on that side of the ball, and no poyer, no hide. It's really kind of Taron Johnson and Terrell Bernard's show, and then Taylor Rapp is kind of like the third voice within that group. And so not only do you lose Taron and what he means schematically from a physical mm -hmm. standpoint, you lose him from an adjustment standpoint. And we saw the Bills struggle with that. You and I were talking about uh, talking about that before we started recording here. We saw 
kind of some miscommunication or some blown assignments. And after the play, you'd see multiple guys looking at each other or doing the hand gestures that are like, yeah. bro, what happened? You're supposed to be here. No, I'm not. You're supposed to be there. And we saw the, the communication pieces that were happening there. I like your, your point about the timing when they, when they were bringing blitzes, they had a really nice creeper pressure early on. I think on the second drive that forced the ball out of Murray's Cam. hands and it led to, Russell du- yep. Uh, to yeah. Russell Douglas making the tackle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Cam Lewis, Lewis was a free was rusher. Free. Yep. It, it got Kyler to throw the ball into the flat yep. and Douglas came down and made the tackle in the open yep. field to force. I think that was force fourth. Down yep. Maybe. That was on third. And so mm-hmm. it, it was real nice. And I thought they were, they were good with their creepers in this game. I thought in the second half, they got a lot better with that cross dog action cam and, and Terrell Bernard really started to work well off of one another with their timing to kind of go to your point. But I think really in that first half, it was, you know, a lack of, uh, communication in terms of everybody being on the same page, adjusting in the moment when we saw the Cardinals shift or use motion and then just some poor run fits, especially when the Cardinals were, were spamming that pin and pull action. The bills were not holding that edge. Well, Cam Lewis got, got a bunch, especially in the first half or Sewell Douglas got, got later on. But as the game progressed, especially coming out of the second half, they figured out how to string it out a little bit, force, uh, force Connor and force Benson to have to cut back a little bit and then play from their support pieces, uh, flowing from inside. So again, a good adjustment piece is coming out. I talked about some of the stats they, they had from a drive to drive perspective. Um, obviously got to be better against Miami. I don't think you can yeah. with the explosive nature of Miami's offense, different type of animal than Arizona, but just got to tighten some things up and it'll be a challenge without Taryn, but nice to see the adjustments they made in the second half, which was needed considering, um, the lack of, of precision defensively in the first half. Yeah, and, I, and I think the game plan changed early going into this game. If you guys were in the film room with us last week, we said, Hey, if you look at EPA per drop back by number of rushers, the bills cannot rush more than four. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. what they need to do is rush four and stick with it. Right. And I think that's what kind of Babbage was doing. And maybe it had something to do with him feeling out the Cardinals, but Going into this game, looking at the stats last year, you can see Murray was not that good EPA per drop back when teams only sent four. So it's like, okay, you don't want to blitz. You don't want to send five or six because he was really good when it came to that. And early on in this game, the Bills didn't. The Bills Mm -hmm. blitzed only 13.6% in the first half. And that really hurt the Bills from the perspective of Kyler was able to hold on to the ball and do some things with the ball. In the first half, he had a 3.44 time to throw, according to True Media. So that that was interesting. But I think that part of the adjustments of, hey, getting Lewis and Ingram in the game and those you know high leverage situations, getting more reps for them, and them just settling in. On top of that, the Bills blitz more in the second half to get the ball out of Kyler Murray's hands. In the second half, they blitz 37.5 percent, and that bumped his time to throw down to 3.11. And it wasn't just to get sacks, which they did get a couple sacks mm-hmm. off of blitzes, but it was just to get the ball out of his hands into the short area, and then they could rally and make the tackle, kind of like we were talking about with those sim and creeper pressures mm-hmm. uh, early in the game. And I think they did a great job of sending those five- and six-man pressures, and it really hurt Kyler Murray when the Bills did send that pressure. When you're looking at EPA per drop bag, it, he struggled as opposed to what we saw last year. Yeah, the excellent point. And it was nice to see that adjustment. We So we saw some successful creepers early in the game. We saw them continue that in the second half a little bit, but we saw more five-man pressures, more six-man pressures. And exactly your point, it wasn't necessarily to get home, but just kind of either bring that free runner, which they did on several occasions, mm-hmm. or just compress that pocket around Kyler and make him have to get the ball out. And especially we talked about it, his height and that kind of being a, uh, a challenge for him at times when you bring that pressure and you collapse the pocket, he's got to get that ball out most likely towards the numbers or to the periphery. It's going to be harder for him to see through the traffic in front of him, especially when the traffic in front of him is Greg Rousseau or AJ Epinesa. I thought that was interesting mm-hmm. as well. Kicking Epinesa in to more of a reduced alignment. And that was half. mainly because of Smoot not being there. Yes. Dwayne Smoot, that would be his role, but either way, that is something that's going to be a huge role this year. Yeah. And again, it was nice to see them. It was interesting or not nice. I should say it was interesting to see them believe in that role more so than the player. If you know what I mean? Not like, well, right. Smoot's not in, so we're not going to do it. They were like, mm-hmm. no, this is something we like. Let's put Epinesa in that role for this game. Mm-hmm. And and again, it was needed. They, they were getting got a lot 
in uh, yeah. that first half. So it was a nice adjustment to see. I also like that they they tried some odd mirror stuff, but it didn't work out no, uh, that, either that's, time that they did And it. that's what I'm talking about. In the first half, they were kind of playing, hey, let's react. Let's contain mm -hmm. him. Let's react. And he toasted Dorian Williams as a spy. Nice. The one play, Dorian got sucked into the line of scrimmage. The other one, just Murray just ran away from him. Yeah, he's just And it's, again, they changed their philosophy from, hey, we're going to try to contain him and, and react to him. Let's and they said, you know what? No, we're coming at him sometimes with sim pressures and creeper pressures where we're sending both the linebackers and dimebackers up the middle. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we are bringing six. Sometimes we are bringing five. Again, he finished the game when only four rushers were coming at him. He had a 0.45 EPA per drop back. When which five is, which, which is really him, good if you folks don't good. know that. I mean, that's yeah. tremendous. And again, the total opposite of what we saw from last year. Yes. So when they sent five at him, he had a negative 1.32 EPA per drop. That's back. huge. When they sent six, he was negative 0.88. So he was terrible against the blitz, which is very ballsy to do against a guy like that. But I was happy to see Bob Babbage and Sean McDermott make those adjustments and say, you know what? Let's play fast. Let's play physical. Let's play downhill. Let's go get him instead of letting him kind of pick us apart in that first half. Yeah, they dictated to him. And um, I think a lot of that, too, let's give credit to Rasul Douglas and Christian mm -hmm. Benford on the outside. They were very solid majority of the game in locking down Harrison, Wilson, really whoever they were on. And then the creativity within that, even with some of the creepers, they're throwing some Tampa 2 and cover 2 variations on the back end with their creepers. Mm -hmm. They're doing that even when they're just rushing a traditional four. It was, it was a good job adjusting while mixing in some of the schematic creativity they had game planned in already and built in. And Eric, like we talked about, it was a necessity considering how the Cardinals moved the ball in that first half. They had, they had to change it up. They couldn't just stay the course because it wasn't working. Right. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about Cam Lewis. We're going to talk about Ingram. Obviously, they made some big plays in those crucial moments. Yeah. Um, so let's get to the film now. Early in the game, again, some of those first game jitters, again, think about Ingram and Cam Lewis getting inserted into this game. And this is just a cover three type look. And you see Ingram top of the screen. He's a flats player here. You see him kind of curl back a little bit. And I think he's just playing a little too fast for his own good there. Mm -hmm. Like he, if he just hangs out right there, he's going to be in a decent position to make a play on the ball. But you see him tr try to transition, get back up field. And then he's just falling all over his play beginning of the game compared to the second half. Him and Lewis, they did a great job in the second half. Absolutely. And it was cool to see the, uh, you know, this, this dime package be a thing again, like it, it was last year, but we thought a lot of it was due to Milano being out and obviously Milano's out again this year. So maybe that's the reason it's happening again. Right. But yeah, this one was frustrating because if Ingram just sits there at the sticks, he's got Dorch covered right there at the mm -hmm. 38. If he just sits there and is fine. And then the way Kyler throws this ball, he puts some air under it and leads DeMarcado, DeMarcado up field. If Ingram doesn't fall over his own feet there, I feel pretty confident in him at least slowing down DeMarcado and, and mitigating the explosive play, but even kind of just making the tackle and just maybe playing a, a, a little bit faster than you were expecting to. And again, Ingram's probably not even expecting to be in the game at that point. So all of a sudden he's thrust in. Right. It's the first game. You're feeling everything a little bit. You're trying to make your reads and your keys and your feet kind of just go out from underneath you there. All right. So we now talk about a play that you mentioned. Absolutely <laughs> bury him again. This is, we talked about it. This Cardinals team, for Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison. And that plays into that whole thought of, hey, they were just kind of, you know, reading and reacting and not just playing fast and be mm -hmm. being aggressive. And normally this type of spy look is an aggressive spy. Mm -hmm. We saw Dorian get caught in the wall. Feet going and took it because like, right, they mm -hmm. got burned the first time they ran as well, I believe on the very first drive of the game. And yeah, good. I, I like the call out for Vaughn there. Vaughn does a good job. And again, when you're playing that, that odd mirror and you've got that aggressive spy type look, you're just looking for somebody to, cause havoc, get the go and kind of get them. But Dorian, exactly your point, almost more reactive mm -hmm. than aggressive. Let's Kyler come to him instead of him closing down the space and changing the angle a little bit. I don't know. Maybe if Dorian steps up, Kyler puts his left foot in the ground and cuts out the side that Dorian was coming from, but just not working early on with kind of trying to pen him in rather than attack him. Like we talked about in the second half. All right. And here's a little more of that first half, like jitterness and reactiveness. I mean, just look at the movement of these guys right here. At prior to the snap, the spacing of it, it's confusing. It doesn't really, I don't know what they're trying to disguise with those kind of stems. But then once they do get into this, you know, Tampa two cover two type look, look at Bernard. He He's so reactive. You know, this is something that he dealt with also where he was just reacting to the eyes of the quarterback. And I understand why, but that right there opens up, you know, for the Cardinals. And it, again, they were just 
not quite settled in early in the first half. And not it wasn't just the Cam Lewis's and the Jamarcus Ingrams. It was also even Terrell Bernard and others. And I get it. First game, first game mm-hmm. of the year. Those type of things happen early in these in the season. Bernie, yeah, Bernard had a, a bunch of uncharacteristic kind of missed tackles uh, on the first drive and second drive as well. And I was also thinking for him, maybe like, okay, Milano's out. You got a change in leadership structure. He's wearing the captain's C. Maybe he's feeling it a little bit. Like I got to make a play. I got to make a play. And then Taron goes out and he's feeling it even a little more. And his eyes usually lead him to the football. But exactly like you said, this time he just bite beat them with physicality. Avoid the block box it in, get under the block and make the tackle. Yeah. Really good job by Cam Lewis and, and Benford as well on that outside. So you've got Hernandez 76, who's the right guard. And then you've got Froholt, the center leading this out against two DB. So you've got two physical mashing type of offensive linemen against a very small DB in Cam Lewis, who's under 185 pounds. And then Benford who's a bigger physical corner, but still a corner. Benford stays on that outside shoulder a bit more. You talked about Cam Lewis stringing this out, playing more outside Matt Milano type style of not letting that guy get into his body. Let me dip underneath and knife in a little bit, box this run in him and Benford do a really good job of boxing this in. Lewis yeah. makes the tackle, but Terrell Bernard, Dake. the different pressures or blitzes that Bill sent in the second half. Again, what they went from up over 13% in the first half to blitzing up 37%. In the second half, here is one of those pressures. It's a six-man pressure. Uh, I'll show you from the end zone angle. Great work between mm-hmm. Cam Lewis and Bernard there. Um, even more so quarterbacks that are smaller, like Kyler Murray, that need the depth of the pocket to see up and over and down the field. And especially a guy like Murray, who thrives, as we talked about, in that zero to nine range over the middle of the field. So the Bills are sending the six-man pressure, and I just love the aggressiveness by Cam Lewis here and how he attacks the hands of the blocker, the center there. He chops those down. He's just aggressive going all out. But it's it's Greg Rousseau that brings down the quarterback here. Um, Greg Rousseau, man, awesome game by him. Good first game out of the gate, too, wouldn't you say? Yeah, some nice plays against the run, which is pretty customary for him at this point. But then several nice plays as a pass rusher. He gets the sack here. He had the strip sack later. Really playing into his length and strength as a pass rusher in this game. You see that outside arm stab from Rousseau right into the chest of Paris Johnson. It knocks him right back. So good pop and shock in the hands. But then he creates the separation. And then he just leans. And now it's just being long and strong. And look at at that arm, the literal literal tree trunk that is attached to him there. And he's just, and for a, for a quarterback that's smaller in stature and frame, this will through the way he attacks that inside of the center allows Bernard to loop. And that play, that play came right after that pin and pull stop yeah. that we showed to lead it off. So that pin and pull stop was the second play on a second and eight, led to a third and six, and then the Bills got the sack there on that cross dog. Really great answer to force the three and out with a sack to start the second half. And here's another big play mm. that, that kind of turned the tide of this game. Uh, another blitz by the Bills. They send Dorian as an add-on rusher there. Uh, but look at the coverage by, first of all, watch Lewis up top, how he cuts that little return route off. But I know the tight end comes open here over the middle of the field, but that's after a collision point with mm-hmm. Terrell Bernard and a switch. And again, it caused Murray to hold on to the ball. So watch how this unfolds. We, we always talk about the push call. There's the push call because you get this running back exiting out. So what Bernard is doing is pushing the running back to wrap right there and telling him, hey, you go take the running back. I will take the innermost guy. That is McBride. And I think what Murray was. Rap pulls a little late or pushes yeah, a little late. He's a little late. But again, tacking in the middle of the field, you, he Murray's looking to the right. And as he comes back to his left, he's expecting that maybe McBride has a little more leverage on Rap, But because of the switch and the contact, that collision point with Bernard, Murray doesn't pull the trigger, and that allows Groot to use that speed to power move. Like Once again, winning first touch, and then the length and power to drive uh, the backup right tackle back, mm-hmm. beach him, and then the long arms and, and length to finish strip sack. Kyler here, Dorian blitzing occupies that right guard 76, which allows Groot to have that one-on-one. one-on-one so when yep. he opens up Beecham and pries him open on the inside and, and gets down to Murray, there's no help inside. We saw it a lot on the Bills four-man pressures in this game. If Groot was trying to work back inside or Vaughn was trying to work back inside on a traditional four-man rush, those guards would peel back and help their tackles with the inside. But 
Beecham doesn't have. So again, like you said, just a good pressure, good individual play up front, but also a good coverage call on the back end and good execution and adjustment as well. Yeah, talk, and speaking of adjustment, we talked about Lewis from the first to the second half. It was night and day, yeah. but he also started to kind of look like Taron Johnson That's at right. times. This is a big run fit right here. Yeah, yeah, like he was not afraid to stick his nose in there. And so you could see Hernandez and, and the center are working to Lewis and watch what Lewis does. Why He had totally, just that little sidestep right there is huge. Sidesteps him. I will throw some kudos to, to Miller. He mm -hmm. rushes up field gets to the heels of the offensive lineman, realizes it's a run. Poor Kevin right Beecham. There. Poor Beecham. Like, yeah, just look at that. <laughs> that right Beecham. there. And then, of course, Daquan Jones, after yeah. that you know, feed block, that compresses the pocket. And they do a great job of, again, avoiding the block here. And he undercuts that block. And he's right there to make the tackle with Daquan. So, Cam, he started to look like Taron Johnson. So, if Taron is out for an extended amount of time, when we're talking the nickel position, Cam Lewis showed that he is – reliable enough to play that position for Taryn for a few weeks if, if needed. Yeah. You saw the, the King and Cam Lewis is pretty much always physical. He plays fast, but you saw more sound technique as the second half went on. We showed it on some of the pin and pulls and this is a good one here. Like it, it it's a great play by Daquan who yeah. really slows this thing down and gets over into his gap, but you've got good gap integrity on that side. Like Daquan has his head in the gap. Cam Lewis, that Milano S kind of dip and bend a little bit to get around the right guard. This run is boxed in. You got Daquan being a Daquan and Cam Lewis and was the opposite of the kind of run fits we saw again in the first half. Yeah. And speaking of pin and pull in a high leverage situation, Cardinals run that pin and pull once again uh, at Cam Lewis and Cam blew this play up, essentially forcing fourth down. Look how quickly he recognized that it's coming. Uh, again, right at him. And so now they got those two pullers once again. And one of those guys is supposed to pick up Cam Lewis. But Cam <laughs> triggers downhill, fires his gun, just like Taron Johnson. Look at him undercut, set that play from Cam Lewis. Yeah, just great stuff. And you talked about how once the defense kind of settled in, they started doing some cool rotation. So this was one of those plays uh, late in the game here. Um, I believe this was on the last drive where Okay, yeah, the Bills are showing a too high safety structure. No surprise there, right? But uh, what are they doing mm -hmm. post-snap? They're dropping Hamlin down. And usually when this guy's dropping down, it, it may it, it usually is cover three. Mm -hmm. But no, what they're doing is they're still dropping into a Tampa two look. He's now a hook to curl defender. This is your other deep half defender. And it's just another spin from a too high to a too high. Mm -hmm. But it confuses Murray, and now you get the pass rush in on it, and Von Miller uses that long arm on Beecham. I'm sorry, buddy. But <laughs> you see the long arm by Miller right there, again, in conjunction with the pass with the uh, pass coverage in the secondary, and that spin can cause a quarterback to you know hold on to the ball or his eyes to freeze, and that allows Miller to get home, drives that right tackle right into Murray and he gets credited with the sack defensive play of the game. It, one, it was nice to see Vaughn up front. Like he talked about Beecham just gets way too perpendicular. And it's, like Beecham is almost like trying to turn and run with Vaughn. Like he's a corner in press who's bailing. On and the that, snap. and that is, I will say that is an offensive line technique. It's called a, mm -hmm. a chase down technique. Howard mud always taught it where, especially when you have a speed rusher up the field, he always say, go out and meet him. And mm -hmm. so that guy will go, you know, kind of shoulders perpendicular to the line of scrimmage and meet him out here. But Beecham crosses his feet and Howard Mudd definitely didn't teach that. <laughs> um, and that really kind of hurt him here because as soon as Miller makes contact and wins that first touch, those legs are crossed over. And now you just don't have the base to, to yes. sit down uh, versus that power rush. And especially against a dude like going to in this type of situation. But I just like the Bills defensive, you know, play call here. Look how patient they are. They don't really show it right away. And then as soon as the ball is about to be snapped, then you see bringing that middle pressure. And you watch Lewis here. For the entire game, he rushed the quarterback seven times. And this was him and Bernard ran this rush. Sometimes it was a blitz. Sometimes it was actually just four, and they were two of the four rushers. But they picked up on, as we saw earlier on the sack, you know, what, the center is going to take one of them, and then the running back is going to take the other. And so it's funny to see Cam Lewis kind of pointing that out saying, hey, you know what, the center's going to take me, the running back's going to take you. But again, that pressure up the middle, Ant, versus that quarterback kind of sped him up, and you see him kind of backpedaling, 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 
And it really just limited where he could go with the ball because of that pressure. It was coming up the middle. And again, he throws it up in speed. But if it comes down to like kind of making a play at the catch point where more physicality and size is going to come into play, I'm taking Jamarcus Ingram uh, against Greg Dorch. And you saw it on that one. Um, and so kudos to Ingram. And But for me, like you talked about and highlighted, it's really just the pressure that they generate up front and what they, mm -hmm. they use. I like you tying into it or tying it into, um, yeah, they ran this look earlier in the game, but they dropped Rousseau and right. Vaughn yep, yep. Uh, out in like that. And so ran the creeper pressure that way and didn't really generate a ton of pressure yep. and, and group kind of fell too much inside into the middle and, and it left the hook curl open by the numbers and it ended up being a first down for Arizona. Dorch, yeah. Yep. But this time, they play man coverage behind it. They actually bring six instead of having it be a creeper. And it the timing from Cam Lewis is really what sells it. It's the stab with his inside right arm and then pulls himself through, flattens, and, and stays around the arc to heat up Kyler a little bit. You've also got some action front side from Ed and Groot. Again, everything kind of compressing all yeah. around Kyler, getting into his face, muddying up space and throwing windows but it's the timing right here from Cam Lewis as you highlighted it. So yeah. we showed it earlier. Cam Lewis was kind of more that spiker and Bernard was that type looper when we showed that cross dog on the third down to start the second half. This time it's a bit of the opposite. Bernard attacks that shoulder of the center for a hold. And then the timing of Cam Lewis, watch him put that left foot yeah. in the ground. Zoom, stabs. Zoom. <laughs> yeah, zoom, zoom. Like it is, per he cuts right off the butt and the hip of Terrell Bernard and the timing is beautiful. Like Bernard does a good job, but the speed and the pace and the angle at which Lewis runs this, it's the timing, but look how tight he is all coming mm -hmm. off of Bernard because Connor's there. Like they understand what's coming, but his loop is so tight. He's able to run right through Connor's shoulder and bear down on a beeline to Kyler and help speed him up again. Multiple plays, Eric, that we showed in the second half of the coverage working with the pressure scheme or coverage on the back end working with the front, more kind of symmetry, more right. synergy and cohesion between the back end and the front for the Bills was really nice to see in general, but especially considering how much they struggled in those areas in the first half, were able to get in in the second half, get on the whiteboard, probably yell at everybody a whole bunch, and then, of course, correct things a little bit and be better in the second. Yeah, it was, it was fun to watch because we did see – some of those blitzes where they're sending a linebacker and then sending a safety late from depth, it just it was very reminiscent yeah. of Jim Johnson and the Eagles. Dude, very I was reminiscent. Say, it made me think of like Quentin Quentin McCow, number yeah. twenty seven, blitzing yeah. for Philly. Awesome, yeah, yeah. yeah and and so uh, it was nice again to see Bobby Babbage kind of get his feet wet, and he was under some dress early in that game. But you can tell that they settled in. All the players settled in. First of all, especially we're talking. The, you know, the Cam Lewis's, Jamarcus Ingram's, even some of the vets. Yeah. But the staff settled in and changed the initial game plan. That's the way it looks. They changed the initial game plan. They said, you know what? Let's stop just trying to contain and react to Kyler Murray and, and their offense. Let's attack them. Let's dictate things. And they went on the offensive in the second half. A lot of that, again, with some of the blitzes and, and stuff like that in those crucial moments. But you also saw the players, not just the scheme start to settle in and make plays. And, you know, when they were in a position to make a play, they did. And that's why Jamarcus Ingram gets a game ball mm. for what he did at the end of that game. And so it was fun, man. It was fun to watch from that perspective because you could see the ebb and flow of the game. You could see how the first game jitters were there. Um, you could see how injuries change, you know, some of the, the, the personnel groupings and things that they wanted to do. And um, overall, happy, obviously, with a win. Um, at home sucks that they're on the short week now against the yeah. Dolphins, but overall that was uh, a very much needed win in week one when in years past, they've uh, had some struggles in week one. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like we, we were sitting here at this time last year, roughly talking about how did this game against the jets get away from the bills with Aaron Rodgers going down on the fourth play? Like what was Allen doing? What, like just what's happening here and how it fell kind of like sand through their fingers. And it's the opposite of this one. You're down. 17 to three, you haven't had the ball. Things aren't looking good. And, and again, the Cardinals, the Cardinals tried super hard last year for Jonathan Gannon. They believe in themselves and who they are. Right. So they came into this game, not like, oh man, like, oh, we're up on the bills. No, they came in being like, yeah, yeah, we're up on the bills. Like we expect to beat them and win this game. So you beat a team that wanted to come in and beat you. And when they were up, weren't surprised by it. They thought they had you, their game plan was sound. And just to have that ability 
things don't always work right from the jump. You have a game plan coming in and sometimes it works and everything goes swimmingly. And sometimes you're like, "Uh Oh, this isn't working. We got to scrap it and pivot and course correct in the moment. Sometimes it happens drive to drive or quarter to quarter. This time it was half to half. And it was nice to see the offense settle in and kind of operate how we thought they would. And they just needed the time and the ball to do so. But (laughs) to seeing the defense pivot and move to more of an attack minded mindset, pairing their simulateds and their creepers, especially with their six man and five man pressures and making yeah. things look the same. And then the coverage creativity on the back end with all the Tampa two invert and or Tampa two robber stuff, however you want to label it, just that non-traditional Tampa type of look, um, I'm a multitude of reps, pairing it with regular four down, pairing it with creepers. It was a nice game plan um, for them to kind of tweak and, and make everything coalesce into one. And now Eric on to Miami uh, for a game that everyone surely will have their antennas up for any thoughts on that heading into Miami, whether it's, Miami in general, what this game means, anything on the Bills, where's your mind at as we look forward to three days now from now from this recording when the Bills play on Thursday night. Yeah, uh, we gave kudos to the Bills defensive staff for that week one uh, adjustment and and game plan. Um, I I don't know how you match up with the Dolphins offense this Thursday without Taron Johnson, without Matt Milano. It's worrisome. It's worrisome when it comes to that. Um, so I, I'm going to dive into some of that Dolphins film here over the next couple of days. Um, but they have an uphill battle versus that offense. There's no, everyone understands that, um, even more so with guys like Taron Johnson out and Matt Milano, obviously being out. Yeah. And it's on a short week. It makes it even more challenging. I do like games like this early in the year. So when I scout the opponent, I'm like, sweet. I only have to watch this one game and yeah. kind of go from there. Right. But yeah, Miami pulling that game out against Jacksonville at home. Javon Holland had a tremendous strip of Travis Etienne to kind of turn that game around a little yeah. bit. You saw, and also too, b- throughout the entirety of the year last year, Jalen Waddle was banged up. Now you got a healthy Waddle and a healthy Tyreek Hill and mm-hmm. what they do with a Chan and Mostert and Ingold and see if they can get things cooking uh, against the bills and what the bills do to combat it. But yeah, being down Taron and being down Milano is significant. Yes. They were down Milano last year. Um, at the That's end a of lot the season, of speed but, yeah. against the Bills defense that is missing players and is still working through some kinks yep. with the communication part of things. And if there, if there's one team that stresses defense prior to the snap and right at the snap, it's the Miami Dolphins, and that scares me. If there's any one team, yeah, that's going to throw motion at the last minute to make you adjust and try and attack your leverage horizontally and manipulate you and get you out of the spaces and out of the windows they want to get you out of, exactly your point, it is the Miami Dolphins. And it's tough even when you have Milano and Taron Johnson, but now it's probably Cam Lewis and Dorian Williams. And this is going to be another game different than the Cardinals, but this is another game that's really going to test Dorian Williams and kind of show us where he is from a processing mm-hmm. standpoint, from a mental standpoint. Um, it's going to be a challenge like it was last year, but the bills came out clean last year, sweeping the dolphins. We'll see if they can sweep them again this year by starting it out with a win in week two against Miami, but that'll do it for us here in this episode of the cover one film room. Appreciate you folks tuning in and watching this episode. If you are watching here on YouTube, please, please, please. And thank you. Drop a like on this video. It goes a sincerely long way towards helping us and the entire team in general to track and trend in front of more eyes and ears. Turn on notifications for the Cover One Film Room playlist here on YouTube. Subscribe to the Cover One channel as a whole. We have you covered pretty much every single day of the week with varying levels of coverage, depending on what you are looking for. If you are listening on one of the podcasting apps or platforms, that's very much appreciated too. Rate and review and subscribe to the Film Room. Check out all the other shows on the channel if the audio platforms are your poison. And again, Thank you for tuning into this episode. Tell your family, friends, and loved ones as well. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, enjoy the conversation and the brand. Word of mouth is tremendously helpful for us in and at this time. That'll do it for us here in this episode of The Film Room. For myself, Anthony Prohaska, for Mr. Eric Turner, thank you for tuning in. We hope you and your family and friends and loved ones are all doing well and staying safe. Be kind to one another. Take care of one another. Godspeed. And as always, go Bills.